Hey XYZ fam! So it's been a day, okay? Like a day. But one of the most common questions we get is whether or not soulmates are biblical. What do we think about soulmates? So let's dive right into it. Come along with us! Zan! Yes, babe. Where are you? Where are you? Uh, <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. I mean, if I don't cut it up, who would do it? Not me. So guys, backstory. We got a bunch of bunch or bundle. What do you call Kalalu again? I think it's a bunch. No, bungle. it's a bundle. Yeah, we get a bungle. Bungle of We get of a Kalalu. bungle of Kalalu from Clarendon. And my wife looks at me and she goes, so so on. <laughs> 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 I buy my car even when even when I used to be in Clarendon, the the person we buy Kalalu from used to cut it up. But my grandma used to cut up Kalalu. So I know how to do it, but I prefer to not. Um as the person who cooks ninety percent of the dishes in this house, maybe I feel 95. like Yeah, maybe ninety five. I feel like Zondre can contribute by cutting up the things them like because I like worm and Kalalu always have worm. I actually haven't found any so far. And I'm not about the worm life. So, yeah, you want Kalalu? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. Anyways, <laughs> soulmates. What do you think about soulmates? I never really knew what was going on with this soulmate conversation until Zara mentioned to me a few weeks back that soulmates are like, like people keep on asking about soulmates and I'm just like, What's so important? What's so? You never hear not about soulmates before. You never thought I was your soulmate. That was that was actually the thing, no, babe. Yeah. Like, I thought mm -hmm. that soulmates were biblical. Like, I thought it was a. Basically, what I thought is mm -hmm. that a soulmate is really just the person who got picked out for you yeah. and said, "This guy is your guy, or this girl is your girl." And it's your plan A. It is your best case scenario. It right. is your assuming that, like, you do all the right things that God says you're supposed to do, mm -hmm. then you're going to end up with this person and you'll be good to go. Let me pause for a second to show you Zandre's full setup. Stop scandal, me, babe. No scandal, I'm just to show them the process. So, the bucket is for what? The bucket. This is so that you have a cutting board. All right, hold on. Let me, yeah. me, me, me walk you through the process, right? All right. From start to finish, you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. So here's how it works. Right. You go so, wash the Kalaloo yes. in this water. Mm -hmm. Shake it off. Yes. And then you strip the Kalaloo. Right. You know, like you look, a true make sure say, there are no crazy looking leaves and no worms and them kinds of things there then so you drop it in the bucket right then you put the cutting board mm -hmm. on the bucket right and you cut up the color low you understand gotcha right. you transfer it to the microwave cover. dish the microwave cover right which is your which is container my bowl. yes right yeah. yeah so so i really thought that you know in the same way that god created adam and then gave him eve created eve for adam actually yeah i was just like it's the same way god create me and create you for me well he create you before and create me but the point yeah, because is because i was born in june and Zandra was born in july so he better put some respect on my name yeah that's why i put a whole ring on your finger and put on a whole name on your name <laughs> me oh me either but we're married believe we <laughs> <laughs> i watched the wedding video but basically i i really thought like genuinely thought it was a biblical idea mm -hmm. but when i started to research it when you told me that we we're going to do a video about it i started to realize it's not as simple as that this idea of soulmate actually is coming from like greek mythology mm -hmm. so the concept of soulmate stems from greek mythology and the famous philosopher plato in his writing he taught that men and women were made in one body and were separated by the gods the Greek myth define human beings as having two faces, four arms, four legs, and possessed incredible strengths. But the Greek god Zeus, or Zeus, I think it's Zeus. It's Zeus. Zeus feared humans had too much power and strength. 
so he elected to slice every human being so you would have been like my half so we would have been connected so them slice were in the middle so we were basically one yeah from before and then he he made us roam the earth our entire lives in search of our missing half and it's from that perspective i was saying that can't be biblical yeah because God says that He created us whole and He created us complete. You know, we're so, all out here, we're out here now, and no, the man never decided to cut the lawn. And all of a sudden, the lawn needs to. That doesn't sound like a weed walker, it's it sounds like, like a leaf blow. Yeah, like a leaf blow. Right. It's actually not coming from a biblical place. Having realized where it's coming from now, I start to realize the subtleties that having a soulmate kind of implies. Yeah. It, it implies that you are literally incomplete. Without another, Without another person. person. Yeah. And I do not think that is biblical. Yeah. Like the biblical maths go like this. One, one plus, plus one, one equal one. one. And it doesn't make sense to us like in the way we do math, but yeah. we, we know that when God brought two people together, he brought us. He brought two whole people. So what is, you know, since we keep on talking about finding the right person for you and stuff like that yeah what is the real danger in accepting that soulmates are true or are biblical if you get what i'm saying is there a danger in believing that soulmates are real yeah because What's one danger? well well i would say that it will make us feel as if we are incomplete if I we don't so. have somebody and it leads f and and I think it's because of that whole way of thinking that people are unhappy in their singleness and they can't live their fullest potential and do what God has called them to do within, in their singleness, we, knowing that they're a whole complete, complete person. person. Like, I'm going to wait until I get that person to truly serve God in the yeah. right way. I'm going to wait until I get that person to go on and, and, and do his work. I'm going to wait until... just to start living my life. Until I start like, living a like, full like life. Like I'm a whole person right. with, a, with, a, with a real mission. And also, anytime we go against what God has called us to do, essentially we're telling him that what he says is foolishness. And that we have a better way. And that we have a better way and a better understanding. And look how our better way is like so off. Because our better way says, no God, I'm not a whole person. I need another person to make me whole. Yeah. And I search for 45 years of my life and can't find that other person. I'm just like, wow, I wandered around the earth for 45 years as a half a person. Mm -hmm. And now I'm hopeless. Like, like when you really think about it, it don't really make sense. Yeah. And for anybody who is, want, who is saying, oh, Zondra, you're going to get cut and... This is kind of how we do it here in Jamaica. You don't have to have a cutting board. You don't need to have a guard glove on. He'll be fine. He does it all the time. You no, know, you guys like to tussle. He'll be okay, all right? But I also want to say that even though the whole concept of soulmates is a flawed concept that's not biblical and it's not something that we believe in, God does care about who we marry. Because yep. the, the, the Bible tells us that he clothes the lilies. And he knows And he knows each. down to the hair that yeah. come on your head. So, so so then the question is, if there's not this one person who completes me, yeah. is there a person who is ideal for me? Well, I feel like God knows who are different. Different people can be ideal for you. Because I never yell one ideal for me. <laughs> so one, I option to win. One. I'm I, I choose you for the rest of my life. life. All that I have, I choose you. And I will, when the sky is falling, for you I'm all in. No turning back, every day, every moment, yes. every breath, you stab you, breath or stab stab you take. take. I, you choose, you. I choose you, you're mine, always, you're mine, forever. So I think that because people die, people die, and if you only had one person for you, then how can you have second and third marriages when people die? Could it be that the one person was for you initially? In, or in that season? Or in that season of your life, but then somebody else now is for you in that... Okay, so, <laughs> but, you know, without complicating the matter, asking yeah. all of these hypothetical questions, I'll tell you what I think. Okay. This is, you know, entirely an opinion and just a way of viewing life that makes sense to me. Not gospel. And not I gospel. Am, like, like, get that clear, guys. I'm not saying that this is the right way and, and the, the only, only way. way. It's just our thoughts and yeah. our opinions. That's what you're here for, right? You're like, you're like talking to us. Cool. <laughs> I honestly think that God has a plan A. Okay. 
I, I think God has an ideal way that our lives would unfold. Like everything, we have an ideal way of how the world is supposed to go, too. Yep. Okay. He has an ideal career for you to take on. He has an ideal job for a given season. He has an ideal place for you to live, people for you to interact with, church for you to go. I really do think he has an ideal. However, that ideal is not the only way. And then throughout life, as you make different decisions... Because of free will. Because of free will. Mm -hmm then some of your decisions will preclude that ideal from happening and the moment plan a falls through the door then plan b becomes your second best option and then plan c if plan b falls through and then plan d and i really think wait where did it reach d a b c d yeah but i really <laughs> think that that is how life in general is set up mm -hmm. And it also transcends the boundaries of, of relationships. relationships. I agree. I and agree. it goes into so so let's say for example that you know and I, I'll use me as the example. Let's say that I was nonsensical and I did go drink one holy but things we're not supposed to drink mm -hmm. and meet in an accident and die before we got married. Lock on board. You know I've no wood side of your, oh so on cutting board. Yeah. Yeah. Entirely superstitious, don't believe it. <laughs> but assuming that that had happened yeah, yeah, to me. Yeah then do i think that you're now you know left to live your life by yourself for the rest because of your life you were the only because person. i was the only person no i don't think so mm -hmm. but i'm inclined to believe that i was the ideal <laughs> you know i'm inclined to believe that and i mean i may be you know i may be misguided but you know i want to be misguided if that is the reality that i live in because <laughs> because you know it helps my self-esteem okay but it, but, but it also <laughs> helps me to trust god better that he knows what his ideal is for us and i'll give you an example think about mm -hmm. when the children of israel were mm. supposed to make it into the promised Whoa, land oh this gun this gun deep very quickly okay yeah they were really supposed to make it in a very short period of yeah, time yeah it was supposed to be like 11 days or i don't remember how many days you guys can tell us in the chat yeah if you know how comments, many days how many days they were supposed to take to make it into the, the promised, the promised land. land but because their decisions precluded their entrance because they just never had the right heart to enter mm -hmm. the promised land god allowed them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years before allowing them in yeah so i don't think it was ideal for them to spend 40 years out there I think their ideal would have been a much shorter time, but based on the decisions that they made, their ideal fell through the door. And then and plan I, B, C, D had to come. Had through. to come in. Yeah. So even though I don't believe that there's this one person for you and there's this soulmate and, and you are not whole until this other person comes to complete you, I do think there are ways to know if the people, if the person who you are interested in is the one. Or at least is the best one. Or for as you. is the best or one. Or the for right you. one in that season. In that season. And to make it really simple, there, there are a lot of factors that you can use. You can come up with your factors. But what I did, because this is Zara will always talk what Zara did, and Zandre will always talk about what Zandre did. We never give out formulas on here. Formulae. Formulae or. Form, form, formulae. Formulae. For, yeah. Multiple. Mm. For, you know, you don't know what I mean, right? But one is to always, when you think about relationships, people say you when you know, you know. But I like to take the perspective of, yeah, when you know, you know. But it has a lot to do with the discernment that you pray and ask God to give you that nudge. And to show you that all that you've been praying for is coming to fruition. Mm -hmm. And that takes first a strong relationship with God. Knowing his voice. Knowing who mirrors his character because if you're a christian and you are in the dating world you want to make sure that you are mirroring god's character and anybody who you're going to be dating or you're going to get married to he, you're seeing you're seeing well i guess it's for the girls but for the guys too anybody that you're getting married to you are seeing components of christ's character in in, in them so my question is are there actual like tangible measurable metrics that we can use to identify whether this person could potentially be my person are we compatible you yeah. know those kinds of things are there measurable metrics that we can use i think it, i think so but it, the, the metrics will look different for each person because the perfect god god knows and he cares about your preferences and he cares about things that are meaningful to you and that is why i think it's important to have a list of negotiables and a list of non-negotiables especially during the dating phase but after things develop and you're moving from dating and courting and you want to know if this person is a person that is going to be is, is a person that god has sent for you to get married to then that i think takes per yep. like deep 
her asking. And I really do think that there are some metrics that you can utilize. We speak about them extensively yeah. in the in the pre-engagement course. Definitely. So I suggest that you guys check out the pre-engagement course if you're at that stage of the game, you know. Mm -hmm. You're late stage of dating, heading into courting, kind of want to know if you must get married to this person kind of thing. We'll link it in the description so you can check out the course. But it really is important to establish what are the important things to you yeah. and what are the biblically prescribed necessities. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, as I said, we speak about that quite a bit more in the course, so check that out. <laughs> and as usual, we're inviting you to join in the conversation. What do you think? Do you think there is one person for you? And how do you really know that the person is the one? Let's talk about it. So you don't cut up a color, Luna? Almost. Almost. So we can wrap up the video, yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on this episode of Adventures, Adventures of XYZ. XYZ. Bye, Bye guys. guys. Here you go, baby. I made a flower. Oh, such a sap. <laughs> <laughs>